and everyone, this is CCM Magazine Live. Hey, it's Wednesday. We're so glad to have you here. My name is Marcus, and I am your humble host. Say hello. Say where you're from. We're watching your comments. That's what we do on here. And uh, we basically get together every, three times a week uh, to talk with some awesome people and to talk with you. So, uh, so here is what's going on. So sometimes the Google Gremlins, if you've watched this show for any amount of time, you know that they come out and uh, wreak havoc from time to time. Uh, we had a great interview with Kevin Max the first week of this program. Sadly, he couldn't get his FaceTime to work. And uh, so we had a really great conversation on the phone. We're gonna do the same thing right now <laughs> with the, the one and only John Schneider who is here with us. But in the meantime, everybody, if you're new to this show, say hello, say where you're from. Um, I'm watching your questions. We'll throw some of those uh, at John here in a second. But I am so excited uh, to have my guest today. He's known, of course, for being on the Dukes of Hazard and Smallville. That's my personal fave. Uh, the haves and have nots. He's also a writer, an independent film producer, and a country musician. So John Schneider is here uh, just wow. as he's releasing so 52 great. songs. Man. Welcome, yeah, John. We just finished. We just finished. Actually, we did fifty-two songs in the last three hundred and sixty-five days, and then just yesterday, uh, you know, I decided to go back to the Greatest Hits album, and there are ten songs on the Greatest Hits album, and we decided to go back and recut all of those. We did six of those yesterday, and that was in Nashville. We had to come to New York tonight or today, wow. and we're going to be. Uh, We'll be back in Nashville next week to finish the final four of that. Man. 50, 58 songs, 58 songs for 2018, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, and uh, so you're not busy at all. I mean, is sleep kind of an important thing to you or no? Well, you know, I slept a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> no, I actually do. I, I sleep quite a bit. We, uh, we still try to get that. I try to get my... Eight hours. I don't believe that whole thing about the older you get, the sleep you need. I, I think the older you get, the more sleep you need, personally. But, uh, <laughs> I enjoy sleeping. I really do. Because, you know, I hit the ground running. You've got to hit the ground running. Nobody gives you anything. You've got to go work at it. Uh, you've got to swing for the bleachers every time. That's right. And you just got to go for it. You've got to go for it no matter where, no matter where you think you've gotten it. Yeah. It doesn't get any easier. Yeah, oh man, that's, uh, that's uh, yeah. The myth. The myth it, is it gets easier. It doesn't get easier. It gets harder. Kind of like that gold medal. Yeah, that's right. It's a it's a grind, and and so you've been you've been at it a long time. I mean, a lot of people know you from from your acting roles, and uh, but you've also been very active in music for for a long time. Talk about really how how writing and recording music came into the picture for you. Well, my uncle was uh, a big influence on me back in the '60s. I started actually musical theater in, in 1968. I can't believe it, but I did. I started back in 1968. Wow. Ten years before, you know, people say, my gosh, you were so young when you started Dukes of Hazard." But in my mind, I'd already been a, uh, at least a semi-professional for a decade. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, I mean, at least I knew, I knew what my design was. I knew what it was I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. Uh, and I knew what really fit me mm -hmm. because I'm a bit of a ham, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is important, uh, an important ingredient, certainly to, uh, to what I do and what you do. You got to yeah. have a bit of, a bit of ham bone. In you. Little ham. <laughs> yeah. Little ham goes a long way, <laughs> but I was, um, I was very influenced by my uncle who had cerebral palsy and I would sit in the basement in Catona, New York. And uh, he would spin 45s all day. Uh, and then he would also write music. He fancied himself a songwriter. So he would, um, kind of a, a gimmick of the day, was, you know, write the lyrics to popular songs to kind of, uh, kind of sharpen your, your writing skills. And he would do that. So I would listen to these songs that he had written and I'd help him write it down and I would Encourage him and a, a buddy of his who had just come back from Vietnam. Yeah, played the guitar, and uh, it, I could see at eight, nine, ten years old what a, what a tremendous impact music had on people. Yeah, uh, and it, it stuck with me. And my dad played in a square dance band, and my my mother used to 
cranked up Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn it's as loud as it can go <laughs> so, so music was always a part of me and and um, I grew up in a great time I mean I was born in 1960 so the the uh, the Beatles were going strong. That's the Jethro right. Tull was going strong, and uh, ELO was going strong. Yeah. This was this was when Carol King was writing Tapestry, and James Taylor was was first hitting the charts, and uh, it was a great time. So there were and Jim Croce was was writing Operator, and I have to say I loved you on a song and photographs and memories. And yeah. Harry Chapin was singing about. Uh, about the cats in the cradle. Yes. So I grew up with a great appreciation for really quite wonderful, wonderful songwriting. Mm -hmm. And that really influenced this new project, The Odyssey, because I, I really don't believe if, if a song doesn't affect the listener, well, if it doesn't affect the singer, then why bother? Right. But if it doesn't affect the listener, then it's not, uh, it's not really worth singing. Yeah. So all of the stuff on the Odyssey, uh, all 52 songs, um, I believe will have some sort of an impact, whether it's, whether it's fun or whether it's sad or whether it's uh, kind of wild and crazy, like let's blow off some steam, yeah. or whether it's melancholy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an effect on it. So I'm very excited about this music. Because it reminds me of what I grew up with. I love your brand of country. It's it's a lot more, you know, it's old school. Like it's a lot more old storytelling and lyric driven. Um, what? Yeah. You know, who are uh, who are some artists that that are inspiring you now? Um, whether it's now? a country or, or elsewhere. <laughs> well, now there's because uh, there are some oh artists gosh. that that do this well still. You know, like yourself that that are trying to carry the torch. Of what country music you know has been? Oh, yeah, there are, there are folks out there, but I tell you, the, the folks I hang out with most are uh, are songwriters. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Chuck Cannon, Chuck Cannon wrote "How Do You Like Me Now." Chuck Cannon wrote "American yeah. Soldier." Uh, Paul Overstreet uh, wrote "Forever and Ever Amen," and yeah. I realize these aren't these are not new songs, uh, but I do I do have a bit of a a bit of a wall up kind of against the, what people uh, not so affectionately call bro country. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't believe, I don't believe there's room or a need for rap in contemporary country music. <laughs> That's right. I believe there's a need for rap. I believe there's a need for hip hop. But it doesn't belong in country any more than country belongs in hip hop. That's right. So uh, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of that. I love Big and Rich. I love Montgomery Gentry. Uh, Ken McGraw is great. Uh, an old crazy, crazy man. Kid Rock is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When he's really kind of carrying the torch of the uh, classic Hank Williams Jr. Well, the classic, real, true. You know, you don't become an outlaw because you went to a truck stop and bought a bandana. I mean, <laughs> you, you either you either is or you ain't. And uh, Bobby Kid Rock is certainly is. Yes. Uh, he's like the David Allen Coe folk, you know, he's, he's the real deal. So I really appreciate what he does. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, and you are very, you are very song, uh, lyric driven in your songs. And, uh, you've got a song called, um, toolbox. That's, uh, uh it's about your father. Talk about, isn't that a wonderful song? Oh, I love that song. I mean, he was your father, just an ordinary man, but I swear he could work miracles with those two callous hands. Yes. I love yeah, that. We put that song out for Father's Day and had such a wonderful response to it on Facebook and Instagram and, and all those places uh, because we're independent. We release our music independently and, and of course we, that means we pay for everything but it right. also means we we depend an awful lot on social media to get the word out. Yeah. And people love that song and uh, when we played it for Alicia's dad, Alicia's dad was in was in Vietnam, and I'm told that the the second time Alicia's mom ever saw her dad cry was when he heard that song. Oh wow! Yeah. So, uh, like I said, every song I believe will will uh, get an emotion out of you, and yeah. it was it was just delightful. They weren't tears of tears of sadness; they were tears of remembering his dad and tears of uh, tears of joy. Yeah, yeah. Well, and remembering his grandpa. 
Well, tell us about your your upbringing and and uh, and your dad and and just uh, you know just how you were raised and and some of the the values that you keep with you today. Well, I was raised. I, I come from a uh, from a divorced family. My my parents were divorced when I was two years old, so I only saw my father a little bit every week. Uh, but my father and mother both had a very strong work ethic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my father would take uh, his guitar, which I have now. My parents passed away. Uh, we just used mm-hmm. my dad's guitar and some of the stuff we got yesterday. Yeah. Um, he would take his guitar and he played in a square dance band in Mount Square, Tone in New York. And uh, a couple times a year, he would do a square dance for folks in wheelchairs. So I, I was given a, a wonderful seat behind the kick drum on the drum set of watching how uh, how wonderful uh, folks who were far less fortunate than me how they were uh, encouraged and enthused and, and uh, enlightened and, and, and they just loved music Yeah. so I saw that saw that with my dad I, I saw, uh, loved my mom dearly but she no lesson goes un, untaught. And my mom's lesson was that when she was a little girl, she wanted to be a clothing designer. Mm. And for whatever reason, she gave up on her dream. Yeah. And my mom was was uh, kind of bitter about that and disappointed in herself for the rest of her life. She died at 83 years old. It was mm. very sad. Mm. So... But I I tell that not to be a downer, but I I tell that because I saw the value of a dream. Yeah. So I tell people now, uh, because a lot of people give up on their dreams, or a lot of people don't even chase their dreams because people that love them don't want them to be disappointed, so they discourage them from trying. And I say, look, go for it. Yeah. You don't want to be 83 years old and lamenting the fact that you gave up on your dream when you were 12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So go for it. Go, right. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, go for it. Go for it with everything that you've got for the rest of however long you've got here. Mm-hmm. Because that's really what, what God gave us. Is a, he, gave us a, he gave us a chore. He gave us something to do. Yeah. And you can't do it if you're not following your dream. That's right. Yeah, man, that's uh, I, I think with you, you've you've got a lot of a lot of dreams, really, that you've you achieved in music and in, in, in acting and in you know so many different things. How would you say it all ties together? Like John Schneider's calling, his chore, his his thing that set out before him is what? Storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> Telling stories, whether it be in a on the in movies or on a television show or in a song or in a play, yeah. just telling stories that will that will inspire or make you think. Yeah. And then inspire you to do something that you either had given up on or maybe didn't think you had the wherewithal to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so in many regards, it's a, it's a cheerleader position. Yeah, here I'm here to cheer you on to make sure you know that you can do it. Whatever it is, the Love. error is people won't tell you what it is. Nobody knows what it is except you. Yeah, and yeah, that's good. That's a good encouragement to all of us. Uh, find that, find that thing, find that dream God's put in you. You well, had a, a great it's mentor, better. and you know, let me tell you the difference. There's a big difference between something you want to do and something you must do. Yeah. <laughs> if you get quiet, you get quiet and you say, okay, what is it that I must do? And chances are you knew what that was when you were about eight years old. Mm. <laughs> That's awesome. That is- I hear that hitting. I hear that hitting on you. You bet. Absolutely. <laughs> Although I'm living, I, I feel like I'm living my dream. There's, yeah, there's always more though, right? There's always more ways to oh, dig no, into that. There's always more, but you're on the right path. You know right. you're on the right path. Because you're doing what uh, you're doing that which you have always known you're supposed to do. That's right. Absolutely. Operating within your design. 
you, um, besides your dad, uh, you had a, a great mentor was Johnny Cash, I found out. Uh, how did oh, yeah. How did you get to know Johnny Cash and, and what are some things that you picked up from, from this incredible man? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Where to begin? I, I, I worked with John on a movie called Stagecoach. And when we met, it turns out, I mean, he'd already done a song on the Dukes of Hazard album called The General Lee. Yeah. And he did that because he and John and, and I'm sorry, he and John Carter and June were big fans of the Dukes of Hazard. So he was already a fan of the Dukes of Hazard. And he went out of his way when I met him to make sure that he told me he was a fan of mine before I got the chance to tell him what a fan of his I was. <laughs> Which is a, a really cool thing. Yeah. And that's what legends do. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. I can tell you that most of, we were, we were buddies. We were friends. We weren't like, uh, it was never about work. We did a couple of concerts together, uh, but it wasn't about that. We, we just hung out. Yeah. And the biggest thing I learned from John is that, that uh, you could be, a, you could believe in God, you could believe in Jesus, and you, did, you didn't have to wear a powder blue sweater and pretend everything was okay. <laughs> Right, you yeah. didn't have to try to be nicer than Jesus. Yeah, right. Uh, you could you could bring your scars to the to the table and be proud of them. Yeah, because you earned them. Yeah, That's right. And so many people, so many times, try to pretend that they're nicer than Jesus, <laughs> and that everything is just hunky dory. Uh, and you know it's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yet, and yet they do it in the name of God and all that's holy. So it's a very bizarre tendency, I think. Yeah. So it was wonderful to see Johnny Cash, a guy held together by his love of Christ and his fear of June. <laughs> and, and by fear of June, I mean his fear of disappointing her. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was quite wonderful. Before that, I was part of, uh, and this, this, I don't want to sound like I'm talking all the all the churches I've been to prior to that. But there is a, you know what I'm talking about. There's a tendency, you know, how are you doing? Oh, I'm just great. Praise God. Yeah. Right. So, well, wait a minute. Are you really? No, I can't pay my rent. I just took my truck. Yeah. But I'm praying anyway. Hang on one second. I'm gonna get out of the car. We're in an Uber car. Is it? <laughs> In an Uber in Brooklyn. There, there's your next song. I'm getting out of the car. I'm going to try not to get hit. Ah. This is but you, so you know what I'm talking about. And they, uh, that's right. So Johnny was not like that. Yeah. And I've seen Christians like that since, but he was the first one. Yeah. Prior to that, everybody was, was uh, I'd say 90% of the people, for some reason, didn't ever want to admit they were having a bad day. Yeah, right. Right. You know? Refreshing. Yeah, to be real. Yep. Yeah. Very real. Sure, come this way. Oh, look out. Hang on. Don't get hit by a taxi. Now, the picture taken. <laughs> no, I won't get hit by a taxi. Or an Uber. Hang on. Sure. We are live on the radio. Hey. <laughs> well, thank you. You're so welcome. Sure. Hey. Hey, look at those shoes. <laughs> Wait a this second. Is, We're... This is live, everyone. He's He's in New York right now. Like John Schneider Studios on Facebook. Awesome. Yes, thank you. Hey, hey. <laughs> Are people recognizing Sorry. you right now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting <laughs> my picture taken in front of the hotel. Wow. So <laughs> that's amazing. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna walk in. Uh, let me go over hiding in the corner. <laughs> so hey, let's talk some more. This is real. This is real. <laughs> it is absolutely that's real. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it uh, is real. No, that, that's that's awesome, and I, I think that's I, I think it's a good um, yeah, it's just a good reminder, and, and what a good uh, real example you know Johnny Cash had until until the end, really. I mean, he 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 aired all his laundry, you know, for all to see. Everyone saw it, and yet he uh, he could never well, yeah, Johnny let go Cash of God. Was totally, was totally real, yeah. and uh, I just ran into. We did a concert in uh, at the Nashville Palace on Saturday night a couple nights ago. And his sister was there, and I was reminded about what a what a great family uh, they were, and what 
real people they were. I mean, Johnny Cash, the legend, was uh, was something that he would he would put on because he, what people expected of him. But that's yeah. not what he was at home. That's right. He yeah. was John R. Cash at home, the yeah. guy that fished and loved to collect Civil War buttons and antique coins. <laughs> Well, uh, well, back to uh, to your real songwriting that you've been doing. Uh, you know, I, I've got to uh, get acquainted with Say that one more time. I okay. lost you. Oh no, no worries. You you've written songs such as "Act of God," which was that based on Hurricane Katrina? It would no. Katrina was was uh, several years before that. We had we had the misfortune in 2016 of having the hundred year flood in March followed by the thousand year flood in August. Oh. But neither neither one of them were attached to a hurricane or a storm with any name. Wow. So they were storms that kind of went by the one side, except they destroyed everything Alicia and I had mm. twice in one year. Wow. Uh, so they meant a lot to ask. I just didn't mean anything to the uh, to the news service because they didn't have some catchy name. But we were uh, we were devastated twice in 2016. But the, the great thing that came out of that was the Shirts, which we did in uh, November of 2016. Okay. Great songs on there, like How Do You Stop the Water and Right. Uh, and Baby. And one of our favorites is An Act of God. Yeah. I love that. And uh, thank you. Thank I love the you. lyrics, yeah, and you're, you're talking about how people come together. You know, that's the real act of God is when is when people, you know, come together and put aside their differences in order to, to help one another. I mean, that's the message, right? Well, yeah, we uh, we were wondering because in, in uh, Baton Rouge at that point, we had had terrible uh, racial unrest, but in a way I'd never really seen before. And it was actually people against blue people. So it was black people and white people against police officers right and i had never heard a, a, a uh, of a race called blue so we have signs in our yard now saying we back the blue yeah, yeah. but what we noticed after this tremendous devastation especially the thousand year flood in august that uh sheriffs and police officers were being treated like real human beings again yeah and it seemed like that that uh, animosity, which I don't understand. I mean, police officers are no less risking their lives or no less soldiers than folks who go to Afghanistan, I don't think. Right. Uh, so that those first responders, I mean, these are people who are putting their lives on the line each and every day for the freedoms that we enjoy. So when, uh, when I talk with my friend out in California, Phil Retro, about uh, an act of God, we we were asking great questions. Why does it take a flood to make us see all of the yeah. all of the love we share in our time of need? You know, now there's no colors, no blacks, no whites, no blues. It's just me helping you. Yeah. It's just uh, and you help me. Just you helping me and me helping you. Um, so I'm very, very proud of that song, and I think it's uh, again, it's a, it's a healing song. It's a song that it's. It, I think it's impossible to listen to it and not be affected by it in some yeah. way. Yeah. And yeah. we just remastered that song uh, after our after our Odyssey experience. We we took all of the tracks from Ruffled Skirts and we put them in the very capable hands of our sound designer and mixer Bob Bullock who did all of the Odyssey project and he remixed them and we added a couple of a uh, couple of our friends in Nashville uh, uh, Tim Akers who's a wonderful musician a keyboard player and Michael Spriggs played the guitar and uh, we spruced them up a little bit and we're just re-releasing those in a couple of weeks. Oh, are they out now? Oh, they're out now. It's called uh, Ruffled Skirts Rebirth and that's on Spotify and uh, iTunes and John Schneider Studios.com. Awesome. You heard that, guys. That's that's where you can check that out. So, yeah, so check these, it out. These 52 songs are completely different than anything else you've done before. I think so, yeah. I mean, what I yeah, mean is I mean, like brand new, brand new songs. Oh, yeah. These aren't cover songs. That's these amazing. Brand new songs written by the greatest, uh, the greatest writers in Nashville, uh, truly, uh, and recorded, played by the greatest musicians in Nashville. 
And in this day and age, every song you do, there are no more albums anymore. So right. every song you do has to be a single. Right. It has to be worthy of being the song, you yeah. know? Right. Uh, so in, in the, the, the way I put it, at, at my age, I say, if, if every song isn't life in the fast lane, then don't bother recording it. <laughs> you know, every song has to be Hotel California. Or right. <laughs> right. Man, so 52. And I think everyone on this, on this album, on these six albums actually, is oh. they're all worthy of uh, being considered singles. That's that's amazing. I mean, and and just fifty two songs by themselves. How did you pick uh, which ones to do? And and you're releasing one a week. Well, uh, we listened. Uh, the how you do it in Nashville is the publishers get word that John Schneider's looking for songs. Yeah, and then you tell them what you're looking for. And in this case, what the what we told them was uh, we're not looking for things that are going to get, I'm, I'm not 24 years old and I'm not going to, I'm not looking for a song that a 24 year old would sing. Right. Uh, what I'm, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for songs that as soon as the writers wrote them, uh, they knew it was a smash. Yep. But for some reason, no one has cut them yet. Yeah. So songs that were the, the favorite children, if you will, of the songwriters that uh, just for whatever reason, no one had picked them up yet. And every songwriter in town had several of those where they're just scratching their head thinking, man, how come nobody's cut this? This is the greatest song since she stopped, he stopped loving her today. This is the greatest song ever written. So <laughs> That's a great we criteria. Listened, yeah. We listen to only what the songwriters who, you know, you've got to trust them, only to what they considered great songs. So then it was our job, Alicia and I, and Paul Lyme, who also is the greatest drummer in the world, to call out of, I don't know, 1,500 songs, uh, <laughs> 52 that we were going to cut. But we did it. We did 22 the first first time around. Then we did 12, and then we did 18. Yep. So we did this three times, narrowing wow. it down, narrowing it down. And, and uh, so by the time we got to what we call the back 18, uh, we really had honed in on exactly what it is that we wanted, and so did the publishers. Yeah, and so did the songwriters. So the last, the last uh, culling process was both the easiest because we had the greatest bunch of songs, and the hardest because we had the greatest bunch of songs. Uh, and we could only do eighteen, and there were there were twenty four that we needed to do, but we could only do eighteen. So we're going to save the. Uh, the overage is there for the next time. So how far, how many songs in are you right now? Uh-oh. Are you there? Still there? I can still kind of hear you. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're, my, my phone's got about 4% left on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll speed it along. Uh, how many songs into this are we right now? How many songs are you into it? How many songs what? Have been released out of the 52. Uh, I'm not sure how many weeks there are in this year so far. Uh, oh, okay. Four, maybe? Yeah, we release a song every Tuesday. See, there you go. So, so check every out. Tuesday and uh, just yesterday. Is today Tuesday or Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. So yesterday. Yes. The song came out called Walk a Mile in My Shoes. Uh, so we release one every single week. Yep. And awesome. we're going to do that until the very until the very last Tuesday in 2018. All right. Until we've done 52. Yeah, I'm so excited about it. I can't <laughs> understand it. That's awesome. I like how you say, you know, everyone wants everyone's releasing singles, albums are are rare and you're like, forget that. I'm just going to blow it up with 52 singles. And Well, I've got a lot of lost time to make up for. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and and awesome. folks can get they can get the first two at uh, if they go to John Schneider Studios on Facebook. We're trying to really build up our Facebook yeah. page. So my plea is that people go to John Schneider Studios on Facebook and they like the page. And if they click on the Shop Now button, they can uh, they can get the first two CDs of the Odyssey. Um, now I do realize we live in a world where people can listen to things for free. So if you want to kick the tires a little bit first, you can go to Spotify. Yes, and look up John R. My middle name is Richard. So John R. Schneider. 
because there was a, a like a classic cellist named John Schneider that oh, comes man. up first if you go the other route. <laughs> so, so look up John R. Schneider, and then you can listen to the songs on Spotify. Uh, but trust me, they're great. You can just go to John Schneider Studios on Facebook, click Shop Now, and it'll take you right to the store. There you go. Awesome. Uh, someone wants to know, I've, I've, a lot of people asking the same question, When when's your next movie? When is the next movie? Well, I just did one uh, called 1973 that's supposed to come out sometime in, I believe, January uh, of 2019. So check that out. Uh, if you want to, I'm not sure that that's what it's really going to be called. That's what it was called when we did it. But if you look, uh, if you look up right now, Roe versus Wade movie, New Orleans, you'll see a lot of print, and of course, a lot of it's going to be negative, sure, because that's just how a lot of those people are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look it up. We did a movie. Uh, uh, we revisited uh, Roe versus Wade, nineteen seventy-three. Uh, I'm in it. Steve Gutenberg's in it. John oh, wow. Boyd is in it. Robert Dobby is in it. It's a uh, it's a pretty terrific film. Wow! Uh, so check that out. Oh, that's awesome. And then uh, on Lifetime, there's a movie that I think if most folks who like me in the uh, in the Hallmark sort of movies. There's a movie called Poinsettias for Christmas. It'll be on Lifetime uh, nice. coming up here, certainly in December. So check that out. All right. Well, that's great. Good. I mean, good to see that you're uh, you know you're you're kind of finding things to do with your time. I guess. <laughs> oh my God! Oh yeah. And of course, every Tuesday night, if you want to see John Schneider, the really bad guy, you can watch the Haves and Have Nots, which is the Tyler Perry show. Yes. That's on the Oprah Winfrey Network every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. And I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm a, I make, uh, make J.R. Ewing look like a choir boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, how, how can all of us uh, that are watching, listening, um, tuning in, uh, be praying for you and your, and your family, John? I'll tell you what, the biggest thing you can pray for for me is understanding from my children. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but I'm going through a, a, a pretty horrible divorce. No, I'm sorry. And one of, the, one of the side effects of that is I have a 24-year-old, a 26-year-old, and a 34-year-old that have not spoken to me in about two years. Mm. Yeah. And if you want to know what that feels like, listen to a song I recorded on the Odyssey called I Don't Feel a Thing, wow, which yeah. is absolutely not true, but it's a defense mechanism. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I would I would pray for me, for my children to go, well, wait a minute. Not, not, I don't want people to pray that they say dad is right, but I want them to say that dad has a side. Yeah, yeah. And they Absolutely. open their hearts and their minds to the fact that, that their father loves them. Yes. Uh, yeah. And their mother loves them. That's right. I've got no animosity there, yeah. but I would like for my chill. I'd like to know that my daughter, the firefighter in Oxnard, California, is safe. Yeah. And right. right now, I don't know that. Yeah. Well, uh, well, something we do uh, on to close out the show is we take just a second to pray. So, uh, everybody watching, Please we listen. Do. Listening now, you're watching later, it all works the same. So let's just uh, do this for a second. Well, God, thank you so much for John and for the uh, for the calling that you put on his life so early to tell stories and to encourage others. We thank you for that. And thank you for uh, these songs that have been coming out in a steady stream of, uh, of, of encouragement, of, um, of, of feeling, and, um, and of, of impact. Lord, we just, uh, we just ask that you would... You would just be the healing force that you are in his family. We just pray that there would be um, that that the most important thing would be love and relationship, and that uh, that he'd connect with his kids soon, surprise him, uh, surprise his whole family with the with the spirit of love that that flows over their family. And um, and God, we just uh, ask for for your peace in in those situations where it's um, where where there's sadness or sorrow or emptiness. And, uh, and we ask that you continue to use all of these uh, tough situations uh, for good, for, um, for, for, for future um, testimony, for future um, stories of, of your goodness. So we thank you for all of that. We're so excited, God, about what you're going to continue to do through John. And we pray that uh, he would um, he'd walk into every opportunity you've called him to. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for that. 
Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you. Yes. You take care. Enjoy your enjoy your dream. Enjoy your journey. And everybody out there, if you're not doing exactly what you were designed to do, it's never too late or too early to start. That's right. That's a I'm good gonna, I'm going to go before the phone quits yes. on me because I hate it when it hangs up. I, I do too. I do too. <laughs> well, thanks, John. This was an absolute uh, pleasure and an honor. And, um, and we'll talk again sometime. Thank you, my friend. Right. I will see you down the road. All right. Take care. Bye. Well, that was awesome. Uh, John Schneider, everybody. Sorry we couldn't get his image or his, his video here, but uh, hey, we got to hear his uh, New York travels and so uh, and, and what he's up to. So appreciate it. Thanks for all of you being here. If this is your first time to CCM Live, we're here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. And uh, tomorrow we've got Planet Shakers, the Aussies uh, from... Uh, the Aussies from Australia, I was going to say. The worship leaders from Melbourne, Australia, they're going to be here. It'll actually be Friday when they when they call us. It'll it'll be cool. It's like time travel. And I uh, hope you join us for that. Um, if you've missed any of these episodes, you want to hear this again, it's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, it's on ccmmagazine.com. And if you go to the iTunes app, uh, it's a podcast. So search for CCM Magazine. Thanks to all of you for being here, and we will see you tomorrow. All right? Okay? You're going to be there? I know you will. My mom will be there. All right.